Hello, welcome to this lesson on Kirchhoff's second law, which is a useful tool to work out voltages in circuits. Let's start by talking about a simple circuit, a cell, a resistor, two bulbs, all in series. You'll note I put a dotted box around the resistor and cell, and the resistor is meant to represent the internal resistance of the cell. So all cells and batteries have some inbuilt resistance. You can't avoid it. We call that the internal resistance. It's just the same as having a simple resistor in series with the cell. So don't get confused by it. It's a cell and resistor in series, all in one unit, which is the dotted box. Let's put some numbers in. Let's suppose the EMF of the cell is 6 joules per coulomb. That means for each coulomb going through the cell, six joules of energy are turned from chemical to electrical, which is the same as saying the EMF is six volts. There's a resistor here, which is meant to be the internal resistance of the cell, but it's a resistor, something that gets warm when current goes through it. Let's suppose it produces one joule of heat for each coulomb of charge that passes through it. And that means the voltage across it is one volt top bulb produces two joules of heat and light per coulomb that passes through it. So we say the top bulb has two volts across it, bottom bulb three volts across it. In shorthand notation we could show that. EMF six volts and three voltages one, two and three volts. Now the important thing to note is that the EMF is six and the voltages around this loop add up to 6. The 1 plus 2 plus 3 come to 6. And this comes from the law of conservation of energy. The 6 volts EMF tells us about the amount of energy turned from chemical to electrical. And the 1 plus 2 plus 3 turns us, tells us about the amount of electrical energy turned to heat or heat and light. And the two have got to be the same. So the EMF is equal to the sum of the voltages for the components in this loop. It's worth noting that if we measure the voltage of the cell, we can't get inside. The internal resistance is part of the internal makeup of the cell. We connect voltmeter to the terminals of the cell on the outside of the dotted box. And what we'd actually measure is called a terminal PD, or terminal voltage, because the terminals of the cell are where we're connected to. And the value for the terminal voltage would be the EMF minus the voltage across the internal resistor. We'd be measuring a terminal PD of 5 volts. And you'll note that if we consider the cell as supplying 5 volts, that adds up or rather I should say equals the sum of the 2 and the 3. So in general the voltage across a supply battery bulb, uh, sorry battery or cell or dynamo, the voltage across the supply will equal the sum of the voltages of the other things in the loop going round from positive to negative. 2 plus 3 will equal 5. Here's one for you to try. I've given you some data on EMFs and voltages. Can you work out the voltage across the right hand bulb? Pause the video, look at the values carefully and just think what would the vo what will the voltage be across the right hand bulb? Well I hope you got two volts. The two EMFs, 1.5 and 2, can be added together. They both refer to the amount of energy per coulomb. So 1.5 joules per coulomb and another 2 joules per coulomb give you a total of 3.5 joules per coulomb. So the total voltage supplied by the cells is 3.5 volts. That will equal the voltages from for the three bulbs added together. So we've got 0.5, we've got 1. That means the third bulb must have a voltage of 2 volts across it so that the voltages add up to 3.5 
which is the same as the total EMF. That's the principle. Whatever the EMF is, the voltages of the things in the circuit loop add up to the same value. This gives us a way of stating Kirchhoff's second law. And this isn't um, a definition to be learnt for an exam. This is a, a simple practical definition which you should find helpful when you solve problems. We'd say that in a circuit loop the voltage across the power source equals the sum of the voltages across the other components in the loop. So the voltage across the battery, for example, equals the sum of the voltages across all the other things in the loop of the circuit. Here's a more formal way of saying it. The sum of the EMFs, electromotive force, around a circuit loop case you've got more than one cell, the sum of the EMFs equals the sum of the potential differences around the loop. And when we use EMF and potential difference in this definition, we're using EMF to apply to sources of electrical energy, and potential differences apply to the things in the circuit that use electrical energy. And you may want to watch the lesson on voltage and EMF if you're not clear about that. Here's a circuit. There are two unknown voltages. How can we work them out? You can pause the video and think about it for a moment. Well, let me tell you, there isn't a, a single circuit loop to help us do this. We've got to identify some specific loops. That means where we start at one point and go around the circuit and come back to the same point. So let's take the loop shown in yellow. We're starting at the positive terminal going round through the two resistors and back to the negative terminal then back to the starting point. So that's one complete loop. That loop isn't affected by the other things in the circuit. There's a cell and two resistors in this yellow loop and we can apply Kirchhoff's law to the yellow loop and forget about the rest of the circuit. We could also say there's a green loop, this outer loop, going from the positive around the top, around the single resistor on the right hand, and back again. That's another loop. And we can apply Kirchhoff's law to this loop. There is a third loop shown in red. This is a bit awkward. First of all, in this loop, there's no cell or battery, and the direction of the loop conflicts with the direction that the current is passing. If we take the conventional current as going positive to negative, the direction of the loop is conflicting with that. The current in the left side and the current in the right side are both going down. So the direction of the current doesn't match, in, match the direction we want to go around the loop. And this would make the li our life quite tricky. And I'm not going to discuss this beyond saying that we'd have to make the voltages across a resistor negative to allow for the fact that we're going in an opposite sense to the direction of the current. Let's use the yellow loop and the green loop to work out the problem. So, if you pause the video, have a go. Can you work out the missing voltages? Here's the answer. Let's go around the yellow loop, the first loop. The voltage from the cell, from the power supply, the single cell, is 2 volts. And that must add up to the other voltages in the loop. So that's 0.3. The voltage across the lower resistor must be 1.7, because 0.3 and 1.7 add up to 2, the same as the battery's voltage. Go around the outer loop. Well, there's only one component. There's a resistor. So the voltage across the cell of 2 volts will be equal to the voltage across the resistor. So that right hand resistor has 2 volts across it, the same as the cell. One useful thing we can note is that if we've got a part of a circuit, for example 3 resistors in series, the full circuit isn't shown, there may be current going through the 3 resistors and suppose we have 3, 5 and 2 volts across each of them. 
what would be the voltage between the left hand side and the right hand side if we could connect a voltmeter between the left and the right what voltage do you think we'd get on the voltmeter the answer is 10 volts and if you think in terms of energy it's easy to see why you can just add up these voltages the 3, 5 and 2 represent 3 joules, 5 joules and 2 joules per coulomb so in total between the left and right sides you'd have 10 joules per coulomb being turned to heat so the total voltage between the two ends we can find by adding the individual voltage voltages across that part of the circuit when we look at voltages for objects which are in parallel we can see that voltages for things in parallel are equal here's three resistors connected in parallel to a cell if we go around the first loop I hope you can see that the voltage across a resistor will equal the cell's voltage but we could go around the second loop through the middle resistor and there's only one resistor in that circuit so for the second loop the voltage across the middle resistor is also just equal to the battery's voltage I should say the cell's voltage and for the outer part of the circuit the right hand resistor again there's only one resistor in that loop so the voltage across the resistor will equal the voltage across the cell so all three resistors have the same voltage and this is true of any components in parallel they always have the same voltage across them okay and that just about covers what we need to say in some textbooks you'll find a more advanced definition of Kirchhoff's second law I just briefly want to comment on it a more advanced definition is this the algebraic sum of the potential differences around a circuit loop equals zero now in this definition we don't use EMFs anymore we simply say that everything in a circuit loop has a potential difference across it some things have a positive and some things have a negative potential difference and we have a sign convention which will depend on the direction of the current and the polarity of batteries for example we'll have a sign convention which means we can give each voltage each potential difference a positive or negative value and if we follow the sign convention we'll find that the sum of the potential differences around a loop always add up to zero I hope that's useful the basic thing to remember is simply that if you go around a loop the voltages add up to whatever the battery's voltage is in that loop